Africa is a continent rich with opportunity. And when business and communities come together, its astonishing potential begins to be felt. With the Sustainable Development Goals steering these partnerships, Africa's future is being rewritten with innovation, foresight, and inclusivity. Crossing the length and breadth of the continent, our journalists uncover these stories and share them with the world. Join us now for remarkable stories of partnerships across Africa, building the future and changing lives. It's Africa's time. It's an economic coming of age as day breaks over Rwanda's capital, Kigali, 21 years after the devastating genocide. A country razed to the ground by a civil war, leaving more than a million people dead, is getting up from its knees. The new Rwanda is one of the fastest growing economies in the region. Major construction, a vibrant tech industry and entrepreneurial growth is at its heart. Here in downtown Kigali, it's organized chaos as goods and money exchange hands. I'm here to meet Fabrice Munyakazi, a young Rwandan banker at Echo Bank, who's taking banking out of the boardroom. Uh, this is uh, one of my clients. So, uh, this is a uh, big client of ours. How are you? Uh, I'm Lisa. Hi, hi, hi. Good to meet you. Uh, you. So this is, this is where you do your business? Yeah, exactly. We are actually in the commercial district, so this is where most of the, the, the trading activity happens. And a lot of our, our clients are actually based on, on this trip, so this is where we feel that is uh, it's really at the heart of what is happening uh, with SMEs in Rome. And a lot of, of the SMEs that are, that are here really need uh, uh, some of our help and we also need them to grow as well. Small and medium enterprises drive a growing economy, creating jobs and building wealth for the country as a whole. Fabrice and Ecobank want to be part of the changing narrative of Rwanda. I came back uh, to the country uh, after doing my studies uh, abroad in the US and, and in South Africa. And uh, the reason why I wanted to come back is because there's such a good uh, opportunity in, in this country. This country is going through a lot of changes, a lot of positive changes. I mean, if you look at uh, all these uh, buildings, yeah, even the roads, uh, uh, just as far back as five years ago, none of these existed. So, I mean, that speaks to a lot of uh, the emphasis that is being put on infrastructure at the moment. And it's, I mean, it's, it's great. Echo Bank is a pan-African bank which operates in 36 African countries. Fabrice and his colleague Wilfred Barco are part of the team tasked with coming up with innovative solutions and putting a framework in place to help young entrepreneurs fulfill their dreams. It's a vision that they've personally committed to. I have a passion for entrepreneurs, young African, who come with ideas and want to go all the way and make, you know, and make good living out of it. And I am in a very privileged position where I can help, I can facilitate that. Rwanda in 1994 started from scratch. Everything stopped and the country had to take itself out of the genocide. Almost a million people were killed. It's very strong because the country decided that nobody else will help the country out of poverty. So it can only be done by people of Rwanda. And we are here today and we are proud to see the huge progress that's been made. Rwanda is one of the top countries in Africa in terms of doing business. And Ecobank is also here and to, to facilitate all that. One of the entrepreneurs helping rebuild the country is Serge Kajiguhak, a man on a mission, a risk taker, who is seizing opportunities and expanding his business in a new Rwanda. East West home is best. At the end of the day, it was very important for me to be able to come back to Rwanda and also put back, put back what I had learned in different countries. Throughout the year, I was always thinking about the day I will come back to Rwanda, get back into the business. But my friends will only tell you that what drives me is what can we do? We're very proud of Africa. It's Africa's time. 
there's a general sense of uh, optimism within the private sector, whereby there's confidence within the entrepreneurs in general. We are happy with the policies, the incentives given by the government. There's a lot of opportunities within East Africa as general, so there's a sense of good things to come in the future. So Lisa, this is basically what, um, what I do on a daily basis. So right now we are going to, to meet uh, Serge. Serge came to us uh, 12 months ago and he wanted to expand his business from uh, storage of petroleum to, uh, to trading of petroleum where the margins were, were higher. Uh, so to actually to deliver the petroleum exactly. himself. Exactly. He's a smart guy. He didn't have the capital or the assets to back the financing that he needed. So what we were able to do with him is to really come up with an innovative solution uh, to, 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 to get the financing for him. So we were able to, to put in place what we call a collateral management structure where the stock was being used as the security backing up the financing. And 12 months down the line, his business has significantly grown. Hey, I'm okay, how are you doing? Now, good to meet you. How are you? So today we've done about six, six discharges. Okay. Ideally, at this time we would love to have done at least 12 double it. So we need to increase that capacity and efficiency. It's a really fulfilling job because uh, it really allows me to, to really help uh, SMEs to really make them uh, more efficient businesses. So I'm really privileged to be in the situation. Serge has a vision to expand beyond Rwanda's borders into East Africa and it's already taking shape. So what do you think when you stand up here looking over your empire? Well, we two things, where we just where we came from and where we mostly where we are heading. There's big challenges ahead and very exciting and we're looking forward to getting involved and getting our hands dirty. Rwanda actually improved its ranking globally in the World Bank's uh, doing business in Africa. It uh, came from 100, I think 170 to 40, 45, two years ago and it continues to improve the environment for business. So if business comes to Rwanda, there are enormous opportunities for partnership. I'm leaving the economic hub of Kigali and heading south to Huye to meet Francois Rutayisire, whose company is responsible for constructing dams, roads and irrigation schemes. Along with his construction business, Francois Credo Hotel was the first to be built in the region after colonialism ended. It's a family affair and is managed by his two eldest children, Joseph and Diana. For Francois, a father of eight, family and community are everything. He managed to flee his hometown with his wife and children at the height of the genocide. <laughs>
kuko namazi barasenya gwe ibintu byose arabisengiye ubukinduka 00 gisura kuri 0 ana ariko tugarutse kufasha abantu bafite intege nkeya kongera kwibaka kubafasha aho baba kubafasha kwatunga Uganda or Volunteers Day is an opportunity for Francois, a local role model, to work alongside his people. On the last Saturday of every month, everyone in the community comes together to literally help rebuild the country. Francois is there working alongside his son and daughter to build a new road in their neighborhood. <laughs> Make people come together, they talk, they chat. It's very good. It opens people's hearts, it makes people really connect. So what's the impact of this on Rwanda? You have a huge past here in this Yeah, we have a huge past, bad past, so the impact is good. The impact is reconciliation and the impact is the spirit of walking. Francois and his son Joseph are committed to moving forward into a new era. Their large-scale building projects require not only skills and expertise, but trust and support from the market. Francois is one of my best customers because Francois is very innovative and then we are always willing to support him. He's very resilient, which is the essence and the culture of the Rwandan today. He's a role model for young, the younger generation of somebody who can start from scratch and making a name for himself. Innovation, community spirit and hard work are changing the image and the economic reality of Rwanda. A generation of young Rwandans who were born post-genocide and make up more than half of the country's population is working alongside those who lived through its dark history. Together and enabled by local partners, they are building a new Rwanda that is proudly rising above its hills. <laughs>